Sunday. You can eat kale chasing after your fortune and glory. Harrison Ford in the network television premiere. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, Sunday. Parents. They were outraged. The world was disturbed. Steven Spielberg was taking heavy criticism. And America had their eyes on the MPAA. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom had just been released with the content rating PG. So, of course, after the success of the first movie, audiences of all ages flooded the theaters to see the next adventure that Spielberg had to offer. However, Spielberg's warnings of the film, they were silenced over the MPAA's PG rating. <laughs> and so, on opening day, audiences with families of small children watched in horror and disgust as... What, well... <laughs> Hollywood knew that it was time for a change in ratings. So with the help of Steven Spielberg himself, the NBAA created the label PG-13. Since then, no changes has, have taken place since 1984. Something else, however, has changed since then, and that would be the content of modern media. As the years goes by, PG, PG-13, and R, they become blurred and uncleared. And what's found in some PG films or, you know, children's movies, they could be damaging for younger audiences. Some sexual themes in The Hunchback of Notre Dame and Coraline, violence in Watership Down or The Incredibles, or language in Shrek and E.T. Some donkey. So, with the production of modern media in mind, should the MPAA rating guidelines be revised? So, what is the MPAA, first of all? Well, it's known as the Motion Picture Association of America, but, you know, humans are lazy, we just go, the MPAA. It's established to represent film studios and to provide content ratings for any film made, distributed, or submitted here in America. Their purpose is to protect younger audiences, specifically children, from potentially harmful content in media. So as the years go by, many ratings and their criteria, they've, they've stayed the same. And with no major changes in over three decades, it's my personal opinion that the time for revision of this system is needed now more than ever before. I enjoy watching movies. In fact, it's a hobby. But when it came to the content of any film, my parents and now myself never went with the ratings rather the messages and content in the film. So that instilled in me a mindset that maybe these MPAA ratings, they don't, they, maybe they don't work. So before beginning my argument for a revision, I think it would be beneficial for us to review what rating labels the MPAA has provided. So there's five. There's G, PG, PG-13, R, and NC-17. So, Rather than investigating the themes and underlying content, the MPAA usually reviews films at face value. So this can be dangerous, especially in children's films that are rated PG, where so often we see nudity from human-like characters. Using my sources, I will provide examples of films that could raise controversies regarding their implied or upfront content. So to understand our present day dilemma, Let's observe the negligence of the modern MPAA when rating older movies from the past. The hit Broadway musical My Fair Lady became an even bigger hit when it was adapted to the silver screen. So the musical follows a lower class flower girl living in 1912 London. Well, she's brought in by a misogynistic phonetics professor, and he takes it upon himself to reshape the, and I quote, Six months, I'll make a duchess of this draggle-tail gutter snipe. Into a beautiful fair lady of upper class. So the film's target audience is not directed towards a younger audience, as this film shows and discusses sensitive subjects regarding objectifying women, sexism, toxic masculinity, prostitution, and the blurring lines of lower, middle, and high-class morality. So this film is beloved by thousands around the world and remembered as being one of the great movie musicals of the 20th century. However, it's also rated G by the modern MPAA. Ouch. The lack of initiative on the MPAA's part to keep younger audiences safe is, well, terrible. This issue is raised to more of an extreme when you find this film title available on Netflix, which due to its low content rating, does not fall under any parental control locks on this site. So 
yeah, sexual theme. Some people may not find that damaging for a kid. Well, yeah, maybe. That's your opinion. When there are no cases of violence in My Fair Lady. But there are plenty of other examples of violence in film. A perfect example of this is the Lord of the Rings trilogy. It was released in 2001 with The Fellowship of the Ring, bringing the international box office of this film and its two other films to a total of $1.9 billion. These films not only marked the turn of filmmaking for the 21st century, but it also laid out the foundations of using modern special effects for all reasons, including the simulation of violent actions and images. So for this essay, we'll be covering the sixth and final film of the Middle Earth saga, The Return of the King. In this film, multiple climactic battles are fought for the fate of Middle Earth. Both theatrical and extended edition releases are PG-13, which includes fantasy violence. However, the battles in this epic fantasy are far from fantasy. Here are some scenes that kind of caught my eye from Return of the King that may not be fit for a PG-13 film. I'll let you decide. Here are some of the clips. Later. It's what is implied in these scenes that make them so intense. The heads, the heads of soldiers being thrown to the literal families of that fallen army. That could be upsetting for anyone to see. The initial stabbing of the dying general earlier, it's not shown, but the brutality of that scene stays with you as you watch him take his last breath. Within this critique of the MPAA's rating system, let me be clear that there are some decisions I approve of. For example, the third Hobbit film titled The Battle of the Five Armies. <laughs> Trust me, it lives up to its name, as its MPAA rating was initially R due to its graphic violence. This is a decision that I agree with. The extended edition of the film was rated R, but the theatrical release is rated PG-13. Unlike most of the fantasy violence towards the orc creatures in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, the final Hobbit film keeps to the brutality that orcs and trolls go through and provide in battle, but gives them realistic human properties when killed. So that includes, well, I'll just let you take a look. <laughs> Although orcs would be considered creature characters, they're given human-like appearances, personalities, and attributes throughout all of the Middle-Earth saga. So for these factors, I do agree that the MPAA's reasoning was right for this R label. DreamWorks Animation is known for their films such as Shrek, How to Train Your Dragon, Kung Fu Panda, and Boss Baby. Yeah, we don't talk about Boss Baby. Among their many films is my personal favorite, The Prince of Egypt. The film stays true to the original source which tells of the enslavement of the Jewish people, the murder of an Egyptian, the slaughtering of the firstborn Jews, and of the ten plagues that wiped out almost all of Egypt, which can all be found in the Book of Exodus, where the story is based off of. 
So the level of violence in this film is more than what is usually seen for an animated feature. Whippings, impalement, drowning, prostitution, genocide, and a wall painting of naked children being thrown to crocodiles are all shown and implied. A family picture! As stated earlier, the MPAA usually rates depending on what is shown on screen. The MPAA gave it a rating of PG. A film that contains murder, slavery, and the wrath of God himself is rated PG for, and I quote, intense depictions of thematic elements. Ouch. One factor that may influence this rating is its style of storytelling through the film's animation. Many children's films are animated, however, People forget that animation is a vessel of storytelling. Also, it could be argued that the original source being a <laughs> Bible story could appeal more to audiences with younger children, which could lead to a bigger box office turnout. So this is an example of a film which is literally underrated regarding its content label by the MPAA. So what happens when a movie is not fit for a PG but too much for an R and not suited for a PG-13? Well, there is one film like that. A Silent Voice is a Japanese animated drama which released in 2016. The story revolves around two main characters, a young girl named Shoko who is deaf and Shoya, a young boy who bullied her in elementary school. Shoya, before an attempt at ending his life, goes and apologizes to Shoko after not seeing her in years. Shoya's attempt at suicide ultimately fails when he's given another chance to become a better friend to Shoko and towards everyone in his life. So the film has received outstanding reviews in both quality and messages from audiences and critics around the world. A Silent Voice had no theatrical release in the US, but was shown in theaters during some time in 2019. Currently the film is available on Netflix with a rating of TV14, which is a rating produced by television networks. The film has one sexual comment, some language, and two scenes with minor blood being shown. It is what is implied throughout this film that raises concerns. Suicide, sexism, self-hate, depression, severe social anxiety, and both physical and psychological victimization are implied elements that are at the same time shown in this film. If you've seen the movie, you'll understand. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. With such deep and sensitive topics being handled, where would the MPAA put this in their rating system? It's not fit for a PG, not enough violence that would warrant an R, but slapping a PG-13 on this film with so much implied content doesn't feel right either. So where do we put this movie? The only course of action to answer these questions is to revise the MPAA content rating system. So as I mentioned earlier, there are five rating labels. I propose raising this number to seven rating labels. Here's a chart I made of my revised MPAA rating system. This proposal of revision shouldn't be considered censorship because filmmakers have the right to tell any story. And some may argue that parents should be the sole deciders of what films their kids should watch, and I totally agree with this, but the MPAA shouldn't be viewed as a rule enforcer that every parent or guardian must follow, no questions asked. We have to remember the MPAA's goal and mission. Their mission is to warn of the film's content and to recommend the choice of its audience of the general public, not enforce what parents should let their kids to watch. Not only would that be a misplacement of the MPAA's purpose, but it would also be a misplacement of storytelling. Storytelling has been a part of our nature as human beings from the very beginning of history. Everyone has a story to tell. Because of this, everyone has a right to hear stories, and they're exciting to us. As time has gone on, we have invented new and exciting ways of sharing stories. However, not every story is for every audience. We find ourselves in a time where stories come from movies which contain many differences in messages and content. I strongly believe that with a variety of the content in modern films today, the time for the revision of our MPAA content rating system is needed now more than ever. We never should look at life at face value. As human beings, we find what is hidden or implied in our lives. So why is the MPAA rating films at face value? rather than searching for the deeper meanings and messages found 
in this beautiful form of storytelling. Until the ratings are revised, we're left with an outdated and broken rating system. So either another repeat of the scene in Temple of Doom will be released, which warrants a change, <laughs> or we, as the general audiences, take the stand in supporting better ratings for all of us and future generations.